Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for Saturday night special. This will be episode 62. So I think we've got a really nice, fun-filled episode this week, man. We've got a lot of stuff, and uh, got a lot of stuff to show you. We got all kind of boxes in here, so I think we're gonna have a uh, a nice long episode here. Uh, we're gonna have viewer appreciation mail. I've got a couple new tools to show you. I've got some pictures to show you. Uh, we're gonna talk about some chrome plating. We're gonna talk about some brass polishing and uh, all kind of stuff. So a uh, lot of things to go over with you this week, okay? Uh, we do have a lot of view appreciation mail. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna have to uh, save a couple of these for next week because uh, I just got home from work today and uh, there was a couple more boxes out there and I, I've already got a lot of stuff to show you and I'm trying to just make it one episode here instead of doing a part one, part two. Uh, got some a little bit of machine work that I've done uh, we got a project that I've started uh, in addition to the welding table. It's going to be another accessory for it. Actually, it's, uh, it's that guy right there. We got a we got a little vise, and uh, I'll talk about that later. We got a little vise that we're working on, and uh, so we've got. I just today got the uh, chrome plating back that uh, Buddy took care of. He uh, he sent it back, and I got that box today. So I'm going to show you the chrome plating on the uh, A Bomb 79 logo for the welding table, okay? And uh, when I came in, I also had another box here, and that was the box from Brad Jacob with my brass uh, drip oilers in it. He did a polishing job on them and sent them back, and they got here today. I haven't even opened the box up yet. I got it sitting right here, so I uh, figured we're going to do a, we're going to open them up on camera. I don't even know what they look like because he would not show me, okay? Uh, he did show me a picture of why he was kind of cleaning them up, but I don't know what they look like finished. So uh, we're all going to see this together kind of for the first time, all right? So we'll get to that too. And, uh, and as I said, I got a couple of flea market things and a lot of viewer mail to go over. So uh, real quick, I want to kind of uh, mention again, we have the A-Bomb 79 t-shirts now for sale over at uh, teespring.com. So uh, if you're interested in a shirt, you can run over there and get you one ordered. And uh, that's them right there. And I don't think last week I showed you, so here's the back of mine that I'm wearing here. You can see what it looks like. Um, personally, I got the 5X because I wanted to make sure it fit. Um, they do seem to run a little bit smaller than what you would normally get. So um, maybe buying one size larger, if you're a little bit bigger, buy one size larger. Watch it a couple times, it'll kind of shrink down. But so, but that's it right there. Uh, I'm really enjoying them. I, I bought myself a few, so I've got something to wear out here, where you know, whenever I'm out on the town or whatever. And uh, I don't know. That's that's it. Uh, again, Teespring.com. Go get you a T-shirt. I appreciate it. It was a 14-day campaign, and as of right now, I checked earlier. I think we're. Uh, at 225, I set a goal for 300. So uh, we're trying to hit that goal of 300. We got about 75 more to go. And uh, I think it was about six days left. So at, when you're watching this, we'll probably be about five days left. And uh, once they hit that uh, campaign in, it'll they'll start printing them and mailing them out. So uh, again, thanks for thanks for everybody that who's bought them. I really appreciate it. And uh, also again, you can. You can still buy the uh, A-Bomb 79 stickers here. That's uh, stickermule.com. And there's a bunch of guys that's been showing pictures of those and showing some support by picking those up. So, all right. I think that's going to be about it. Let's, uh, let's move on and uh, let's take out some of this viewer mill and then we'll get to the, uh, the chrome and the brass, okay? Okay, our very first one for this week is from Matt Torno, and he's from Billings, Montana. Uh, Matt had, had actually messaged me on Facebook and was talking to me and said that he had this clamp here that he would like to send me, and what it looks like is a cant twist. And it needs a little bit of work. The, uh, the handle here is bent, and I believe one of the uh, rivets was, uh, yeah, right there, one of the rivet heads was missing. but. It's got a uh, pretty neat little feature right here. It's got a, uh, he's, he calls this a ground clamp. So I guess maybe you can attach your ground to this and this pops on right there. 
So if you need to attach it for uh, some welding current. So nice clamp mat. Uh, whenever I, whenever I'm out here piddling around on the weekend, sometimes I like to take these things and you know get do a little work and uh, get them back into clean condition. That's how I do a lot of the C clamps that I get. So uh, again, Matt, thank you very much for the uh, can't twist. That'll be a, a great addition to our other clamps. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one more here and uh, keep moving on. We got a few. And uh, this one comes from Tom Knopp and he is from Charlotte, North Carolina. And what we have is another uh, clamp in here. This is a toggle clamp and uh, pretty good size toggle clamp. And if you've never used a toggle clamp before, you can mount this wherever you need to and you, you pull that handle where you push it back to lift it up and then you just pull it forward and you can adjust this bolt right here for your tension. So it's just a quick on and off clamp whenever you're doing re repetitive type work. I've seen them used a lot in uh, uh, drilling applications. So I think this would probably be a pretty nice little clamp for our welding table. I can build a uh, machine a nice little steel mount for the bottom that will bolt to the, uh, the welding table and maybe we can use this on there. So we'll see. We'll venture into that another time. It'll be another project for the shop there. So uh, thank you Tom for that. Okay, you got another big box here full of stuff and so alright this one is from Lane Sisson and uh, he's from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana and he has got a, a box full of goodies in here and uh, Lane is uh, he wrote me a very nice two page note Lane it was very nice reading that I, I appreciate all of your kind words and uh, that was that was great thank you very much for that uh, Lane's been in the business for a long time he's also a machinist and I believe uh, in his note he's got his own shop over there and he said that this is a few items that he did never he didn't need, he didn't use, so he, he wanted to send them to me. So, one um, first one here is uh, this <laughs> big old face mill. Takes them square carbide inserts, and it uh, looks like a, a shop made arbor for it, inch and a quarter shank. So, whenever we get the KT running, cutters like this will be greatly used in that big boy mill. So we'll come in handy. That will come in handy later on when we're doing some big milling. So we've also got this really cool 3060 clamp, or uh, not a clamp, but a square, I mean. And very nice job that's been done on it. It's been surface ground on all sides. And he actually had given in his in his letter here, he had given a nice little tip on another way that you can use this on the milling machine there. So, pretty neat. It's got the uh, initials JAM in there. That's uh, real close to mine. So we were we were uh, two thirds there on the uh, <laughs> the initials being spot on for me. All right. So we've got that, and we've also got an end mill here. This is a it's an inch and a half four flute end mill. It's been used, but it's still in good shape. And these guys I really, really like. We've got some step blocks here for the milling machine. Got a pair of them. So let's see, yep. Those are always nice to have. Um, I've got a big mm -hmm. pair of cast iron step blocks that, that you've seen me use several times. So. I'm gonna put these over there and we'll use these whenever we need them. Very cool. All right, and I think we got one more item right here. Let me go ahead and move the box. And I haven't even taken this out yet, but what it is, is a travel dial. Okay, there's the book on it. Model 7S or 7 series. So anyway, let's take a look at this. All right, there she is. Right, it works. So there's your point of contact right there. 
And you can tell it's been used. It's got the little felt wiper right here that they always have on them. And uh, mounted on a machine. So you can do inch, inch or metric on this. Pretty neat. So this may be another shop project for us in the future. Maybe see if we can come up, build us a mount for it, and use it on one of the lays. Uh, I know a lot of guys uh, use this on their machines. I, I believe Keith Finner's got one on his lathe. And so anyway, we'll see about putting this to use, Lane. I really appreciate that, man. Nice, nice tools and a nice little lot of stuff right here. So. Uh, by the way, Lane had uh, mentioned, you know, Shreveport isn't really too far from where I'm at. A few hour drive, I think. But uh, he said he'd like to come down this summer. I think he said ride his Harley down here for the weekend and, and uh, probably see the beach and uh, come by and visit. So maybe this summer he'll actually get to see Lane stop by and visit me in the shop. <laughs> Thank you, Lane. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get to some welding table updates, all right? <clears throat> so... This week, after, after tonight's S&S, &S, you're going to see part 15 of the welding table build, and that's going to be the one where I'm actually putting it together. And you'll see it completely assembled for the first time, and we do a little bit of welding test on it. And uh, we'll talk about the results in the video, okay? So, it's, uh, it's been together. It's, uh, it's over here. <laughs> I'm actually getting ready to take it all back apart, and uh, this is the paint that I picked up yesterday. And if the weather holds up this weekend, I'm going to try to do some painting. Uh, they're talking about possible rain, so I'm just going to have to, uh, once I get it apart, we're going to have to monitor the weather and we'll see. So anyway, I, I went to Sherman Williams. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not a paint expert. I haven't really dealt with a lot of paint. And uh, whenever I'm not around it for a while, I kind of forget what's what. So I just went to the guys at No Paint. I went to Sherman Williams and said that, uh, look, I need a really good paint for a welding table that I'm building, okay? This is what the man ended up uh, recommending. Uh, it's called DuraPlate 235, and it's an epoxy, okay? It says that it's a multi-purpose epoxy, and it's a two-part A and a B, uh, four to one ratio there. So this, uh, this right here will be a very good quality durable coating that should last for a very long time. And it also should hold up very well to the, uh, the heat and the, uh, the sparks and any kind of spatter that might fall down onto the, uh, the base plate. So that was another re reason why this was recommended, okay? The, uh, the one issue is that I wanted to go gloss black, okay? This is not a true gloss black, it's a, it's a semi-gloss black. So what I'm gonna do is paint it with this and then I'm going to evaluate, do I want it any glossier? Because what we can do is uh, I can go back and I can buy some other paint that will go on top of this that will uh, bring me that, it'll, it'll give me that glossy finish like I'm really picturing in my mind. So, but it's just, uh, you know, this stuff's pretty expensive. And, you know, I, I spent almost $100 on, on this right here. Plus, I got a can of thinner and, uh, you know, the little, little things that you need. But, you know, this and the thinner was, you know, the most expensive part. So uh, I don't mind. It's not about the money. I don't mind spending the money. But if I don't need it, then I won't have to spend that money on the welding table. But if this doesn't give me the look that I want, then I'm probably going to go back and buy the other paint. It's just uh, it's going to be a lot of paint. And I, uh, I don't understand why you can't just... Well, they won't sell you this much of it, but you have to get a gallon. So, you, you know, you end up paying all this money for a gallon of paint. And I'm actually really only going to be using a little bit of it. So I might have to find some other projects to use this stuff on just to kind of get my money's worked out of it. And I know one's going to be this uh, vice down here that I'm working on that we'll talk about in a little while. All right, so uh, that's your update on the painting. And uh, maybe next week we'll see an update on that. Just depends on how it goes, okay? We've got some more parts here that somebody has contributed for the table. And this is from Joe Hill down in Tampa, Florida. Uh, he's the one that has always sent me that uh, the red dirt rub that I like so much. But what he has done is he's gathered up, let me pull a couple of these out 
so uh, you can see them a little better there on the on the camera. Come on, Mike. Well, what he's done is gathered up some silicon bronze bolts to use instead of the uh, the stainless. So that's what it looks like there, some silicon bronze. So he sent me a few of the uh, quarter inch bolts, a couple different lengths there, and also some copper washers and some silicon bronze lock nuts and also the hex nuts. Um, the two that that are missing, I don't know if, if I talked to Joe about it or not, um, the two that hold the block down to the table. Um, I don't know if we discussed that or not, but anyway, he, is, he has sent me another one here. And this is another silicon bronze bolt, uh, half 13 bolt. And what his idea was for this, he, he actually made a little sketch on uh, an idea to make a, a little bit more stout. Um, the spring mech that goes on the back of the grounding the grounding straps and what his idea was to take this bolt and actually machine it okay find a heavier duty spring machine it like a shoulder bolt really so machine it 3 8 here and then turn and thread this area on this end for uh, quarter 20 and just use that instead of the stainless so We'll, uh, we'll venture into this and, and see how we can take care of that also. So, all right, that's, good. That, that's one update of the table. And uh, by the way, thanks very much, Joe, for sending me these, man. These are, these are great. Um, I've never actually used a silicon bronze bolt, so that's pretty cool. I, I appreciate you jumping in on that. All right. We've got some chrome plating to look at, and we've got some uh, oilers to look at. So let me uh, make some room, and we're going to go ahead and, and get to those, okay? All right, so this is the box that uh, Buddy Moss from up in uh, Jonesboro, Tennessee, had uh, sent back with the logos in there. And Buddy was the one that uh, took care of the uh, sending these down to the uh, chrome plating shop and having them done, and uh, he picked them up. And uh, he took care of everything on, on his end and then mailed them back to me. So that was really cool of Buddy to do that. He uh, duct taped the box up really well to help keep from getting pierced and open and busted open. We all know how that happens whenever people are sending things. So I know you want to see these, so let's go ahead and check these out and we'll talk about the uh, chrome plate shop a little bit. So we've got two. All right, there's one, and here's the other one. And he did a good job of packing everything really well, okay? So, we'll start with, uh, this is the flat one. And I'm gonna need a rag. I've already been handling a little bit, uh, show my buddies, but, so there's the, there's the flat one there in the chrome plating. what the back of it looks like anyway. Uh, one second, let me get a rag. All right, I had to do a little bit of wiping on it. You know, I showed all my buddies at work these and everybody was kind of touching them and handling them. But anyway, so there is the flat one right there. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this yet, but I actually wanted to uh, incorporate this somewhere in the shop as a, as a nice little shop logo. So there's that one. And the one for the welding table, is right here. I think it turned out pretty nice. I like the shine, I like the chrome there, so I think this is gonna look good on the welding table. So I think you all know by now, in case you don't, Keith Finner actually cut this out for me on his uh, plasma and then hand shaped it so that it would fit my uh, column for the welding table. And then I drilled the holes in it. And now we got it chrome plated. All right. So this was done, this was done by Tri-City Plating. I actually put their, uh, their card in my wallet there. So uh, I'll put their info up there in the video in case anybody's interested in them. So Tri-City Plating 
and they're in Elizabethan, Tennessee. Elizabethan, Tennessee, okay. And for me, I had really nice, speedy service. I sent these up there to Buddy, and then he drove down there to see them. And I think it was like a week of him dropping these off and then turning them around and having them done. Uh, it was a week. And they actually had, uh, had told Buddy that it was going to be probably about three weeks before they get to them or get them finished up. So that's what I was expecting was about three weeks. And uh, they busted them out and got them done in a week. And uh, nice job. So guys at uh, Tri-City Plating, if any of you guys are watching, I really appreciate it, man. They look great. And uh, thanks for the service. And uh, hopefully this right here will maybe help you guys out. You get a customer or two from watching the video here. And uh, they do chrome bumpers. So restoration parts for cars, I would assume. All right, so there we go. We're ready to put this thing on. All we gotta do is get the table painted. So thank you very much for Buddy for handling this and uh, thanks Tri-City Plating for doing a good job for me. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at some drip oilers now. All right, so this is the box that just came in from Brad, Brad Jacob over there at uh, Basement Machine Shop. Um, I've already mentioned to you before that he, uh, he asked if he could do a polish on the oilers for me as a way of contributing to the welding table. So I sent them to him and uh, he, he got them polished up. So let's go ahead and uh, cut into this box and check them out, okay? Yep, okay. Corks. He made some new cork seals for it. I told him that one of them looked like it was trying to uh, leak a little bit, so it must be for them. I think you've got, I think you got them apart in uh, pieces here. All right, let's go ahead and just get all these out. Um, I did send him the little manifolds also, and he, he had worked on them. So I think we got all the pieces separated here. And that was probably so I could put them together. So um, all right, this feels like a glass. Yes, that's one of the glasses. Now, I don't know if he polished the glass or not. He might, he probably did. So. Uh, if you did, there's the there's a glass. It looks nice, very nice and pretty. All right, let's find some of the brass here. Oh, look at that, man! That's nice. So there's your little manifolds to transfer the oil, and you did you did a nice job. All the edges are, are softened up. And these are the ones, these are the parts that David had had uh, made for me for the table. And it don't take much, get a little bit of fingerprints on there. Those look really nice. Awesome job, Brad. I'll take some pictures of all this stuff and put them there in the video so you guys can see it. I know it's a little more detailed with the photos. Okay, so this would be part of the oiler here. Oh yeah. It looks great, Brad. Beautiful, beautiful work. It does, it looks like chrome plating, only gold color. All right, I'll tell you what, let me just open this stuff up and I'll bring you right back, okay? Hopefully that'd give you a little better shot of everything. I just went ahead and unwrapped it all. I didn't realize that they were still uh, apart. <laughs> so that was a surprise to me. So I'm gonna have to uh, put these together, which uh, pretty pretty well straightforward uh, oilers. So uh, I think Brad did a great job on them. They, they do look fantastic. 
and you know the fact that they're old they're, they've, they've been recycled off of a south bend lathe it's uh gives it even more character you know the the welding table so these were the corks and i believe these were the originals i don't think that these were new ones i just i was thinking that uh because i had found those that he had cut some new ones but so that's your corks and then this is all of your pieces you see the needles everything looks really good that's gonna that's gonna give it a nice touch the uh, the welding table there so I'm just going to leave it at that and uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll put these things together and then once we get to the uh, the build video in the welding table project you'll see them uh, fully assembled together and then we'll put them you know we'll build it and you, you guys will see them uh, together then okay thank you very much Brad you did an awesome job and thank you for the help on this okay well while I had you in zoom mode I thought I'd go ahead and give you one more shot of the chrome on the logos there since I had the camera set anyway so there it is and uh, again done by Tri-City Plating so today was flea market day and uh, I've got a few scores here and thought I'd share it with you like I usually do the uh, the prize the prize tool that I think I came away with today was this this nice steric tool right here I was digging through a guy's toolbox toolbox full of stuff and this is the only thing I seen in there that interested me and at the time I couldn't even read what the name was it had so much rust on the surface there but it is a steric tool and I've got my catalog here uh, to tell you what it is it's the steric number 245 and whenever I found this you know I pulled it out and looked at it and the first thing that I could tell but it was I was thinking it was a taper gauge Okay, you have your tapered, you have your tapered leaf there with different thicknesses marked on it. And then you've also got some different feeler gauge thicknesses. And then you have another gauge here that's got some holes and slots in it. They're numbered and they have some uh, thousandths of an inch measurements wrote on there. Okay, so I wasn't sure exactly what it was called. But I asked the guy what he wanted for it, and he said $2, so I bought it. So what this is, is uh, I got my trusty steer catalog, and this is what I use for reference and for wish list. <laughs> but this is uh, number 245, and it's called the Engineer's Combination Taper, Wire, and Thickness Gauge. Consists of wire gauge, a taper gauge for measuring slot widths, and an assortment of thickness gauge leaves, all folding within a compact steel case. Okay, and then the rest of it. But, so you, it's kind of like a multi-tool for engineers. Very neat. So I think what I will do is go ahead and give this the, uh, the rust treatment over here in the, uh, the evapro rust. Do a little cleaning. I'm going to take, take note of it and make sure that we're not uh, doing any kind of over treatment on it. I just want to try to get some of this rust off and get it cleaned up, looking good. And we'll put it in our uh, toolbox down there, our Gerstner. That's pretty neat. I, I don't think I have one of these, unless there's one hidden in one of Dad's or Granddad's boxes that I can't remember. So I also got the uh, this little, I got this small little cooler that I thought was pretty neat. I uh, paid a couple bucks for that. I don't have one that small. So why not got that uh, these two paint guns I paid five bucks a piece I know they look pretty rough and uh, this one I don't know if I'll be able to get all that crap off here all this old paint but I might be able to if I can find something to soak it in uh, you paint guys maybe you can give me a, a uh, some tips on maybe how to how I can clean this up here in the shop I would like something that I could just put this in and let it soak and hopefully dissolve this off there and give it a nice little bath I don't know if this is a good one or not but it says Mac tools on it econo coat I know Mac is a very popular brand of mechanics tools and uh, known of good quality stuff but uh, it was five bucks and at least they uh, they did clean the inside out so I guess it's like a little detail 
a little detail gun. So anyway, this is another one that he had, and this one was five bucks also. And uh, I thought it was worth a shot, so we may we may uh, test this out and see if I can get some paint to spray out of this thing. And it seemed like it's pretty decent. These are the kind of paint guns that we use at work to paint our cylinders. So I'm kind of used to using these. And uh, you get them adjusted right, and they work pretty good. So we got that. And then our last score there is this uh, smallish uh, bench vise. And this is a, uh, it says Majestic Chicago. And right here it says 35. So I asked the guy what he wanted for that, and he said 20 bucks. So I thought that was well worth it. And it, I plan on doing a full cleanup on this. I'm probably going to take this apart, and I'm going to use the bead blaster and get it cleaned up and repainted. But what my intentions were for this is to probably make an adapter plate for it. And I'm going to use this on the uh, welding table. It'll be a nice little uh, vise that I can just keep over there on it and keep it bolted down so if I need a little vise. It's pretty neat because it's got, it definitely needs a clean enough. It's, it's pretty well rusty and crusty. But it's got these, uh, these pipe jaws in there. And uh, I guess they're just supposed to uh, float like that. You can move them around. So you got a couple bite, pipe jaws in there so you can catch rounds. And uh, these jaws don't look too terribly bad. So I don't think it's been abused. I just think it's been subject to a lot of moisture for a long period of time. So it's kind of like grown together. So we'll get that sucker cleaned up and uh, worthy of being used around here and and that's it that was uh this this week's flea market finds okay okay we're just going to revisit some of the stuff that i've just already showed you the uh, flea market stuff and i wanted to point out i want to go ahead and show you what i did on this stair engineer's gauge i soaked it last night and uh, this is my uh evapo rust here i keep and uh i've been using it since i bought it and I just keep that foil over because I don't have a lid. And I think it's getting pretty close to spent, but it's still working. So I do that so it don't evaporate. But anyway, I put this in it yesterday and I let it soak. And I wanted to show the guys that I haven't used it yet kind of what it looks like when it comes out. You know, I haven't done any buffing on it, any polishing at all. You can see how it does. You can see the really, the really bad areas that were um, rusted, you know, on the shims there. But it's clean, and it's got all the rust off. So you can take it from here, rub it with a little Scotch Brite, which is what I'll probably do. Uh, I might even try my uh, polishing cloth to see what kind of a reaction it'll it'll give it there. But so I just wanted to share that. So you got some old rusty tools like this. You just want to clean them up to make them usable. You can soak them in that evapor rust and it does pretty good. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to share a couple more things here that, that I'm going to do. Also, uh, well, I want to point out, I've taken this old, what was that? That was a Chicago. I've taken this old Chicago vice completely apart. All the, all the components are all apart here now. Okay. And what I wanted to do was, was just a nice little resto job on it, I guess. You know, clean it up. I'm going to bead blast most of the parts, and I'm going to paint them and put them back together. And I'd like to use this little vise, uh, make it, build it up so that I can mount it on the, uh, the rotary welding table and use it as a little vise there. Okay. There's a couple parts that we're going to have to do a little bit of repair on. It's nothing major. The bolt that, let's see where it goes. Okay, this bolt here that's gonna come up through and uh, lock it down. All right, it's pretty well stripped out. So we're gonna have to make a new one of these. That looks like a uh, just an old carriage bolt with the square head here. Okay, uh, what else was it? Okay, I think somebody's already been into this. So this little bolt here, once I pulled the pulled this off the base, there was some threads in here and they look like they're stripped out but I think that was just somebody had just stuck that in there like that 
and that's what had centered up on the base here, you know, your swivel base. I think that was just keeping it centered, just like that. You know, so when I took it apart, you know, that's what happened. It just came right on out of there. All right, so we'll do something about that. Uh, make a bolt or a pin or something for it just to stay centered on. I, th I think that was about it. Uh, one other thing that I decided like to do is, uh, you know, Tom Lipton uh, preaches pretty hard about take your jaws off and replace them with copper. And that's a good tip. And he does that on all his vices, I believe. And it's something I'd like to do too on a couple of mine. So I think I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, buy a little piece of copper uh, from McMaster. And instead of putting these steel jaws back on, we'll go ahead and make up a new set of jaws for this little vise here. And uh, I, I'd like to eventually do that for my other big vise down here also that, that I always use. So we'll have some copper, uh, copper jaws on there. And I think that's about it. Just do some cleaning up on it and uh, paint it, make it look nice and put it back together. And what, what we'll also do is like the base here, what I'm gonna do is, is make a, a steel base plate out of some of my bigger flat bar down here that this will bolt to and then that plate will mount to the uh, welding table. And what I'd like to do, I'm still thinking of the design, have some kind of, uh, probably like a T-handle, like on a lot of the, the uh, vices, have just some kind of quick handle there where I can loosen it and pivot this thing around a little bit and move it if I need to. And then have, a, have it where you can just lock it. I'm thinking something like a T-handle so that you don't have to have a wrench over there. You can just grab it and loosen it. So we'll, we'll keep playing with that idea there. All right. So we'll just do this in S and S, you know, I'll show you guys some updates on it. And one last thing I talked to uh, my buddy Cody today and you know, he's the, he works on the restorations. He's an excellent painter. He knows the field. I showed him a picture of that, you know, I said, Hey, I scored this today. And, and uh, any tips on uh, cleaning it up? And he said that you can buy paint gun cleaner at uh, O'Reilly's. He said, just pick up some of that gun cleaner and soak this in it for a while and it should make this look new. So I'm gonna go get some and try it. I don't know if it'll be today, but we'll get some and try it and see how that does also. So just thought I would tell you that because I know earlier I mentioned, is there any tips on cleaning these things up? blast on it and uh, looking a lot better already and uh, oh, I wanted to point this out I forgot to mention this earlier you remember this little clean it brush that I showed in the in the other SNS and a lot of you guys had commented on that said that you think it was for uh, cleaning shotguns or, or rifle barrels and that you can buy these in different sizes and uh, I'm definitely going to be picking me up some of these because this was handy whenever I was cleaning this I actually soaked it in some of the uh, degreaser because the hole had some really dried up grease and stuff in it in here also. Well, I was looking for something to clean that hole out, get all the grease out. And I remembered I picked that up and I threw it in the box down there. And I went in there and I used that brush to clean that out and that worked out perfect. So 
So uh, nice tool. That was a good find. There. So anyway, we uh, I, I noticed something about this uh, the way that they built this from the factory. Okay, so it mounts there just about like that. And I haven't cleaned this up yet, but you have this little lock handle that pulls it down and locks it just like all vices do. Well, if you'll look, it doesn't sit flat. And I noticed that when I took it apart, that it's just casted on the bottom. You can see some grind marks there where they had casted it and dressed it up, but it's not flat. Okay? So it rocks back and forth there. So whenever it's pulled down, it, whenever you lock it and you pull it down on that side, it's actually picking up on this side. It's not sitting flat. We're going to fix that, okay? This here, I haven't put a straight edge on it yet or anything. Uh, this one here would be really easy. I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll chuck this one in the lathe and we'll just, we'll just true it up. And we'll make a face cut and make sure that this is completely flat. All right, the main body of the vise here is going to be a little more tricky. I would love to chuck this thing up in a lathe and face it off that way, but you know, you could get two on there easy. Uh, the other two may be a challenge. I don't know. I might look at it and see, but if not, we'll probably just go to the mill and uh, clamp it down somehow like this and just take an end mill and just run back and forth and just face that off just so that we can make it flat you know that that bolt's going to pull it down so that's something that we're going to be working on and uh, kind of improve on the uh, the original the original build here okay so i'll be uh, i'll be showing you that too